Blair Cooper, the host of CLE 43 Focus. Let me welcome two people for whom I have the utmost respect for their years of dedication to their passions. Dennis Cash, a music maker and a promoter with a national reputation, and Khalid Samad of Peace in the Hood. They have teamed up to help with other organizations like Black on Black Crime to create a movement over music, or rather music over violence movement here uh, to reach out to young people in a way that talking just is not going to do it. Gentlemen, thank you so very much for coming in and talking with us about an effort to try and reach out and again stop the violence. The first half of the program was about shoot basketballs, not people. This is yeah. about using music, the universal language of love, if you will, mm -hmm. uh, to reach out to young people. Music, many say, played a detrimental role in the kinds of things that young people do. Uh, now music can be used to find a way to overcome that kind of thing. Right. Uh, Dennis, uh, tell us who you are. I've known you for a long time, and Khalid, of course, you've been on the show, mm -hmm. and I've you for 20-plus years. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, well, you know, I'm no stranger to uh, entertainment in Cleveland. been in since I've been a kid at 14, professionally singers, and we always produce music and promote shows and all that kind of great stuff. Um, one of my biggest things, uh, I've been paying attention to the streets for the last 10 years, the violence. I'm in it all the time. I deal with all kind of music, whether it's country, western, uh, rap, R&B. I'm involved with it. So one of the biggest things that I saw was there's a problem. And the biggest problem I realized was it comes from the music. Uh -huh. You, We call it, uh, you, you cry your behavior by things that you see every day. So I got together with uh, some of influential people. I always believe that you can't do one thing by yourself, but you can do, you can move mountains with people. Uh -huh. So therefore, again, move. We decided to come up with a project uh, that was simply titled Move, Music Over Violence Experience. And the concept was real simple. When we were kids, and I explained this to Khalid when I first called him on the phone. I said, look, when we were kids and we went to school, there was always issues. I remember very well when we were uh, young, the darker kids would get picked on by the light-skinned kids. And, and then it switched all, over time yeah. to, to, you know, the whole mm -hmm. One of the things that made us pay attention to that was James Brown. James Brown came with the song, said, loud, I'm black and I'm proud. And the beat and us dancing to the music made us pay attention to what we were doing, and then we started treating each other totally different, because I got brothers, a lot of brothers. Half of us light-skinned, half of us dark-skinned. We used to literally do that, mm -hmm. call each other names and stuff like mm -hmm. that. So that was as a kid, and then seeing Marvin Gaye, Michael Jackson do Beat It and songs like that that brought gangs and stuff together. So I was telling him, I said, look, we got to put together a project with the, all the guys I know in the music business. I know everybody from MGK to the OJs to Bone Thugs and Harmony to the new kids on the block that's coming out now. I know these guys. I called everyone up in this city. Anybody that's been doing it said, look, is it possible we can do something together? We need to. And I explained to him the simple situation. I don't want you to change what you do in the music business. If you like trap music next to your style, I'm down with that. Whatever your music is. But I said, we got to be able to, since the community gives us, mm -hmm. they listen to your music, we have to be able to give back. It is something that uh, you mentioned one of the, uh, the groups, the OJs, and one of their mm -hmm. biggest hits was there's a message in the music. Mm -hmm. And Khalid and I were talking earlier when he was talking about James Brown being on time and ahead of his time mm -hmm. with soul power. And even mm -hmm. the song King Heroin, mm -hmm. as you know, Heroin is now coming back, uh, ripping off many communities across the country. Khalid, let's, let's get you into this. Mm -hmm. We also have a song going to play in a little bit, mm -hmm. and I want to leave mm -hmm. time for some of that. But um, Peace in the Hood, been out there in the vineyard for a very long time, mm -hmm. fighting this battle, saving lives, trying mm -hmm. to stop the violence. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I want to thank you for inviting us here because this is very timely. You, you know, things go around in circles, and you did mention earlier the uh, whole aspect of what we got together in the early 90s to deal with the whole aspect of gang violence and the uh, high levels of uh, homicides and gang related killings around the country. And what we knew coming out of those summits in the early 90s, uh, we had to address the whole issue of violence within hip hop, uh, mm -hmm. the rap. The violence that were going on that peaked really around 96. Uh, it's 20 years since that time, and we had to go to Chicago and bring the rappers together to sign the rappers' players because of all the, you know, uh, involvement between East Coast and West Coast rappers, which uh -huh. caused a lot of violence and homicides, uh -huh. killings, drive-bys. Yeah. So, our brothers, uh, correct. It seems to be a resurgence of uh, lyrics that are uh, anti-culture. I would say it. Uh, this summer, we had a peace camp. And our young people were beginning to recite lyrics that, that were prevalent or maybe on one radio station. Mm -hmm. And uh, some of the songs, uh, the lyrics were 
they were beyond anything, I, just basically vulgar, they were misogynistic, uh, appealing to the lower self, you know, guns, yeah. violence, crime, drugs, um, you know, disrespect to women. And I was saying, well, if this is what this generation is listening to, is going to produce some of the similar behaviors that we were dealing with, you know, in the early 90s. And, and exactly that's what's going on today, you know. And so consequently, we know we need to kind of mobilize and organize and collaborate in a way to bring our young people to the table, get some of the recording stars from the past. Uh, you mentioned the whole thing about... Uh, you know, James Brown, you know, mm -hmm. right, a uh, soul power. I mean, it's, it was relevant then, it was relevant then. I remember that, that when I came out of high school, that was my favorite song to kind of pump me up, you know, in athletics. Uh, you know, soul power, we need it, we want it, got to have it, give it to me. And that, that song was really resonated with me as a young right. man. Let's do this. I, I mentioned that there's a video we want to play. Let's play about a couple of minutes there. I come back, we'll have maybe a minute, minute and a half on the other side mm -hmm. of that. To talk about why music is going to be the method by which we reach more young people to try and stop the violence. Maestro, if you will, roll the video. And there you have it, uh, movement over violence experience. And that is so important now. Dennis, uh, thank you for that. Tell us uh, who that is, and very briefly, we have just a little bit of time. Mm -hmm. want to talk more about the overall concept, who that is and why young people have to talk to young people about saving young people's lives. Well, that's Ezzy. I met Ezzy at a uh, showcase, him and his mom, a couple of years ago. And I approached his mom and asked who was managing. And I told her, I said, out of all the kids I saw rapping, I said, that's one kid that had the whole package. And I don't do that often, because I, I know entertainment. I said, but he's got it. I said, whatever he does. She said, he didn't practice. I said, he didn't practice. I said, oh, you got to practice. Old school method. Mm -hmm. But anyway, I always told him I would always keep in touch with them. And I, I met him again on a uh, tour with uh, Mindless Behavior. And so what happened, I reached out to them and explained to them they had I've already been working on programs like that with helping the kids mm -hmm. and trying to guide them a different dire direction. So they immediately said they'd want to be involved with it. Tell us more about the message in his song, because we didn't mm -hmm. see the whole thing, but uh, just in terms of what it really means and how it's going to connect to young people. He was talking in reference of looking at it from both angles. When one kid is not caught on the streets and other was, and he was saying how things is changing, where he wanted to better himself in the one video where he was showing counting poverty and he wasn't taking the traps in life to try to get to a better place. So that's what he was referencing to everything is changing. So one of the things I wanted to mention too, we talked about it off screen was one of the guys that has multiple records with Joe Levert is involved in this project. A lot of people in Cleveland would know him by the name of Joe Little. Mm -hmm. I want to give him a big shout out because me and Joe had a conversation two months ago and we were talking about the Compton movie, Straight Outta Compton. Mm -hmm. Joe called me and says, hey man, 
They made a lot of money after how great it was. And I told Joe, I said, I want to talk to you. It's going to take you totally different. I said, the one thing I got in that movie when I went there mm -hmm. is it showed musically and culturally we have not trans we have not changed in almost 30 years. And we have to do that. And, uh, mm -hmm. and if we're going to make a difference and save some lives, we do have to make the transition. Speaking right. of which, let's make a transition here and come back. I'm going to blow through what I normally say so I'll have more time on the other side than I'm with Khalid Samad and Dennis Cass. Stick with us. We'll be right back. CLE 43 Focus will be back after these messages. Tell me what's on your mind. What's next for Cleveland? What do you think we still need to improve upon here in Cleveland? I think safety in schools. More businesses coming downtown. I think we need to work on tourism. Hello. I love this place. Como se dice potholes in Spanish. The construction, I see that everywhere. Um, more jobs. You're being honest, that's what we appreciate. <laughs> your mind let's talk about Cleveland what do you love about Cleveland there's a lot of cool hot spots to go to it's a food city an art city the East Bank and a flats is looking awesome there's a lot of things happening or it's less scary now come to Cleveland it's less scary <laughs> in the sense of community it's like a big small town we've got everything here and a lot of people just don't know it <laughs> We have just a little bit of time. Let's just get back to our discussion with Dennis Cash and Khalid Samad as we finish our discussion on our music over violence experience. And uh, Khalid, uh, when you see that there is this effort now to try and use music to impact on young people as music impacted on you mm -hmm. and me and Dennis as we were young, talk to us about how important that is and why this is such a necessary move. Well, it's so timely because music is influential. It's one of the most influential things in our culture today. And consequently, uh, people are either informed, misinformed, educated, or miseducated. And our young people many times are guided or misguided based upon the lyrics, the things that they want to act out. It's interesting because we're in Black History Month now, and Dr. Carter G. Woodson, who wrote that book, The Miseducation of the, the Negro, Negro yeah. said, if you can control a man's or woman's thinking, you don't have to worry about their actions. You can tell them to go to the back door or not tell them. They'll go without being told. And if there's no back door in the back of the house, their very nature will demand the tools to build a back door so they can go in through it. And that's where we're at today. We have to take our youth and go into their psyche and go into their thinking and their analytical skills and bring them back to the front door away from the back door. I am far from a biblical scholar, but I remember my father saying, as a man or woman thinketh, so is he or she. Mm -hmm. I kind of did it my own mm -hmm. way here, mm -hmm. but that's, that's so key. And Dennis, tell us how we can get in contact with you, and I know Peace of the Hood is always out there, then we gotta wrap it up, because time is going. Okay, uh, you can reach me at starmakers2 at hotmail.com. That's starmakers2 at hotmail.com. I wanna give a shout out to all the groups that's on, if I can, Affinity, Ezzy, we got uh, Joe Little, we have Sweet Even, Savage Life, we got Brady Hill, Humble G the Fiddler, yeah. OG Shakespeare, Royale, Big Moochie, and whoever I forgot, several people that you have to get it. And the music is all based on not no violence, just straight music of messages of we can love one another. And that's the mm -hmm. over, overall arching theme here. Gentlemen, thank you so much. Thank Keep you. up the good work. Then it's right. good to see you again. Mm -hmm. Khalid, always a pleasure, man. Okay, thank you thank very you. much. All right, and don't forget to check out this and past editions of CLE 43 Focus on our website at cleveland19.com. Thanks to our very special guest. Bye-bye, everybody. If you were seriously injured in an accident,